Hello everyone and welcome back to my European Space Agency RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. We are in sandbox mode right now because I have something to test as a solution for this lander problem and it is a new part. Uh, so that is why we're in sandbox mode because I've created a part and it's a matter of testing that part. Uh, but we are testing the lander again of course. The problem that we've been having is that basically I've been decoupling this heat shield uh, before the final pass into Mars atmosphere and that is because I wanted to leave the engines down here free to make correction burns prior to our entry. We've even seen that during the series that we need to do that occasionally in order to correct things after the main stage has finished its burn because we were using the HM7 engines and they only have one ignition and sometimes they're a little bit off. Uh, so that's why I wanted to leave these engines free but that means that because we're entering like this into Mars's atmosphere on the final pass, we're not getting as much drag as we could if we had the heat shield like this. But even with the heat shield like this, I don't know if we'd be getting enough drag to allow us to deploy the parachutes, though of course this is the more standard way of doing the Mars entry. And you know, I'm always nervous about doing it this way because then we have to try and decouple the heat shield away without it slamming into the pod, which, you know, involves having imbalanced uh, separatrons so that it flings to the side instead of right below us, in which case it'll smack us in the rear end. Though, you know, the parachutes might be strong enough to prevent that. It depends on the timing of everything. It's complicated. Uh, so, uh, that's why I didn't want to do it this way except for the fact that I didn't want to block the engines but it seems like we have to of course uh, that is the standard way for Mars and so I've developed a new thing people were not happy with the inflatable heat shield option uh, I, but I still think I was gonna make a whole video about why inflatable heat shields are just a natural option for Mars because gosh darn it it has a really thin atmosphere it's got, you know, we're getting in at 5,000 meters per second, so we're not incurring that much heat. The heat is uh, sensitive to the density and also the velocity. It's uh, very sensitive to the velocity, and we're going at 5,000 meters per second instead of 7,800 for Earth entry. And so people have been testing inflatable heat shields for Earth entry as well, and to some success, but we can use it at Mars easier because there's less heat, but we really, really need drag. We really need drag. And so the bigger the heat shield is, the better, but we don't really need heat resistant materials, not, not severely heat resistant materials. We don't need the whole ablator thing. In fact, uh, even on this heat shield, we dump most of the ablator, and I'd probably dump all of it if not for the fact that it would react badly to that. So, yeah. We would like inflatable heat shields, but okay, people in the comments were dubious about inflatable heat shields. And obviously, for some strange reason, Realism Overhaul hasn't configured the stock inflatable heat shield for Realism Overhaul for RP1. Uh, I don't know why. It, it is a realistic part. Uh, it is the part that we should be able to use, but apparently they were shy about it. So, what I've decided to do is make my own part. It is not an inflatable heat shield, but I have a decoupler here, so that'll make it... Oh, I don't have to have that decoupler then. Uh, but this is an uh, actual decoupler rig with the built-in separatrons. So it fits like that. It's specially made for this lander, you'll notice. And I've made a flap heat shield with HRSI tiles. So. HRSI tiles should be plenty enough for Mars uh, because, again, the heat should be less uh, less than Earth entry as long as you have enough surface area, right? Because we need drag. If you don't have enough surface area, you have to go lower into Mars' atmosphere. It still won't be that hot. It's just, uh, it could be annoying. Anyway, but more surface area is what we need. And so I decided to make this flat heat shield with HRSI tiles and I masked it all out. I made sure to get the surface area and figure out how much mass we would need and the mass of this heat shield is 1.08 tons with the tiles being 475 kilograms and the aluminum structure being 605 kilograms. So that's what it is. The decoupler I also masked based on aluminum and their heat tolerance is based on aluminum. I uh, used that tag. So you can see the internal temp is the one for aluminum and then the HRSI tiles is the skin temp 
and we're going to see if it works. And this is just the normal aluminum numbers. So I use the tags, uh, it's all legit and everything. Uh, for pricing, I just uh, looked up what kind of pricing they did for heat shields in RO. I looked into the tech tree thing or the part list, whatever. And I chose a number at the higher end of things. So I figure that's reasonable. But yes, so as legit as possible. And we have it like that. It's all cuddled up in that. And I guess we don't need these because it's sort of redundant with those, assuming it works, right? So my question here right now is I haven't put any aerodynamic thing majiggy on this. It's just an animation. And the question is whether the animation is going to produce more drag than this situation with it retracted. And that is what we're going to test first. Also, I would like to test the decoupling of that stuff. So we are going to cheat this into orbit around Mars and we are going to use the RCS to deorbit, I suppose. And then we are going to, I mean, we probably need some sort of cruise stage at the top. Now, there is another thing. There is another thing. I had for my uh, Japanese playthrough of RP1, which I didn't continue, unfortunately, created a Vegas command pod, a two-person command pod that was supposed to replace the ugly advanced command pod. Oh. Which is huge, by the way. I mean, uh, the, the, when I pulled it out, it was, you know, close to it, but it's huge compared to the Gemini command module. But taking a look at it, the advanced command pod is, in fact, lighter than the Gemini cabin. <laughs> 1.37 tons compared to 1.3468 tons. Uh, more amazingly, perhaps, is that the skin max temp of this advanced command pod is 3,373 Kelvin, which is more than anything else in existence in the, <laughs> as far as I could tell. Whereas the poor little Gemini cabin is 2,000 Kelvin skin max temp. And so somebody must really like this advanced command pod. It's, it's supposed to be only rated for Leo re-entries, but, but it does have a built-in heat shield, to be fair. It has got, it's got the ablator in. Uh, the Gemini one doesn't, so that's probably why it's got all that heat shielding. But just the fact that it has the heat shield built in and it's still so light uh, is remarkable. Uh, anyway, I wanted to replace that command pod with one that looks better, but also omit the heat shield. So this one does not have built-in heat shield and the Vegas command pod. So I subtracted the heat shield mass from it. It's 1.2 tons. And so if they figure that the advanced command pod is legit, uh, I just copied the thing. It doesn't have a heat shield and it's got that uh, text but it doesn't have the heat shielding in here at all. I should get rid of that text. Uh, but yeah, I've got the Vegas command pod and that might be better than this. It'll just be my own custom command pod and it's not Gemini. But I'll consider replacing the Gemini command module with that later on. But that that's an option I'm thinking of. In which case, probably I'll also... I, I, I think I need to change its heat tolerance. It's still got the same one as the advanced command pod, but that's because it was that has the um, ablator on it. So I'll probably change that to the same as the Gemini command module before trying to use it. So the good thing about the Vegas command pod is that it provides a wider base for this tank. And that's something I would like. That means that our lander will not be quite as tall and it'll pull the center of mass further down closer to the center of pressure and that will hopefully help us avoid flipping or something. Well, though we didn't really have flipping problems before, even though the heat shield on this side, which is even further from the center of mass, but just in case. I'm conscious of that potential problem, even though we haven't really dealt with it. Okay. Okay, so as you can see, the heat shield collider is working fine. And here we're set up with our very slow orbit and approach. Um, though I think I want it, you want the periapsis 180 degrees away from where it is right now. Okay, so that will be on in daylight when we approach, but we still have to bring our orbit down a little bit more. We apparently have two Kerbals on board, just 
or added pain and suffering, I guess. Uh, uh, that's probably bad because we, I don't think, have supplies for them to be on board right now. Yeah, we only have six days of supplies. It's gonna take longer. Let me get them out of here. On our initial capture, we won't extend the flaps because we already tested that 56 kilometers was a good deal. So we will do that. What I want to see is maybe Far has some opinion on this situation. Um, let's see. It uh, it reads the reference area as 19.6 meters squared. Okay, what? 21? Can you give me more than that? Because it's more than that. They all got colliders on too. I don't know. Reference area is complicated, so it it makes me happy that at least it increases. It seems to recognize that the animation changes that, but anyway, we'll see. We'll see. Now, this is a custom part, and I haven't changed the drag cube at all. Sometimes uh, some of the heat shields, they have a custom drag cube. I haven't done that, so we'll see if that's a problem or not. What I want to see is whether we get the same amount of drag with this heat shield, which is the same size, as we did with the other heat shield, the ablative heat shield that was, um, I, I wouldn't say tweakable, but adjustable. Adjustable is the word they use. With that one, we got an orbit that was lower than Phobos's orbit on the capture. We're barely on escape right now, so we're probably going to capture, but I'm going to see how far we ca capture. There's nothing on here. There's no lifting surface module. It's just basically a collider. There's no special drag cube. Nothing. Oh, I thought I'd fix that. I did copy over different stuff. Okay, well, it's using some yaw. Maybe now in this orientation we do have the center mass center lift issue. That's weird, because on the top we didn't, and you'd think it'd be worse on the top. I mean, we did have some, but I think it was within the limits. It did use some RCS to hold itself. But it wasn't maxing it out. Well, I'm gonna try and deploy the flaps just to see what happens. So we see the drag there. I swear the drag decreased for a bit. Hold on. The drag, yeah, the drag decreases. Well, no, it increases for a little bit. Okay, 62, 69, and then, okay, it ends up at, no, then 66. Hmm. It seems like it really thinks that this is the reference area. That factor is like the factor between the 19 and 20.7 we see here. I don't know why it thinks that that's the area though. This should be more than double the area. How do I get it to be convinced that this is more than double the area? If you guys have any ideas, please do tell me. I still think that this will ultimately be the solution, but or if somebody thinks that this is cheating, please tell me why. Uh, I'll go back to the inflatable heat shield option, darn it. I have all sorts of possibilities here. Uh, there's, there's other things that I can pull. For instance, we could just make the thing lighter by doing hydrolocks. And to do hydrolocks, what we do is we'd carry the water and then use a water splitter to convert it and into hydrogen and oxygen because then we don't have to worry about the boil off along the way and then we'll be lighter. So then our same heat shield will be able to slow us down more. So even that, and we've got, there's a AJ-10 Hydrolox edition that's available. Uh, it's yet another AJ-10 hypothetical thing that they've got. I feel like it hasn't brought us down quite as much as the other one did. 
So looking at right now, we're getting less drag. Let's kind of do something about that. I, maybe I should just do RSS Reborn in this install. At least I know that will work. We're just going to go around again at the same altitude. One other reason for the tile option is that I'd eventually like to make a heat shield with a trap door for the engines. And then it'd be a reusable heat shield. We wouldn't even have to decouple it. We'd have to figure out the landing legs around it. But again, this is where being able to make custom parts can be really handy. Okay, I'm again not going to adjust the periapsis. We're going to come around and see how it goes. We might be coming straight down with this. I did think of more complex deployable flaps for the heat shield that requ would require a more interesting animation than just this, like and might cover more of, let's say, a full diameter here. But I decided that this would do for now, since I didn't know whether FAR would like this, and clearly FAR does not entirely like this. Now, what, I'm gonna, what am I going to do about that? Should I use like deployable aerodynamic surface for it or something? I don't know. Maybe I should look at the inflatable heat shields to see what they do. I guess this could be considered an inflatable heat shield. Just not one. But functionally, as far as KSP is concerned, it might be the same. Okay, pretty sure we're coming straight down this time. Honestly, if uh, this works out, even though the flaps aren't giving us our proper drag as far as far is concerned, I'll just take it and call it a day. Okay, arming the parachutes. Okay, drogue chute deployment. Well, they held this time. Now it's a matter of that decoupling. I just guessed that the thrust and fuel on those. So, who knows. I'll try and decouple it without retracting the flaps and see what happens. Okay, off goes that. I'll take it, I guess. Okay, let me just make sure those are active. Okay, that exploded. Okay, they have enough deceleration. Too late. Oh, uh... <laughs> of course I did that. Okay, uh, this is I burned countdown. Fooled me once, and then I waited too long, though. Mm, okay, we are going to try that again. So the unlock cost for this thing is thirty-five thousand, and the price is three thousand. It seemed like there were. Pretty big heat shields in the part list that uh, were priced like that. I didn't find a heat shield. There might have been one heat shield that was priced more than that, but it was a full 10 meter heat shield. We are not a full 10 meter heat shield. So other than that, everything else, the other heat shields were all priced less. So that's what I went by. I mean, probably we could just do an HRSI heat shield without the deployable flaps, but this is nicer. <laughs> Uh, since we're not getting the benefit from the flaps anyway, I could save us some mass by doing that. And if it turns out that we have mass problems with our launcher, I might consider that option. This is heavier than the adjustable heat shield, by the way. I, I don't think it would be heavier than the adjustable heat shield with that ablator if we dropped the flaps, though. It would probably be lighter with HRSI. 
One reason the flaps don't go straight out, by the way, but are tilted backwards is for a center mass, center of lift issue. They aren't actuating. They can't control us. Gosh. But yeah, we'll probably have to have a cruise stage of some kind attached to the top here. Oh, it's not wobbling this time. Only a little bit of yaw. Huh. That's interesting. I wonder if... Uh, I hope RSS Reborn doesn't do anything that would cause problems for RP1, though. Because it does, like, basically eliminate the real solar system folder to a large extent. It sort of has its own version of things. Okay, around we go. By the way, the Cyptron's on the decoupler here. One of them has two nozzles, is how it works. You can see this one in particular has one going up, but one going horizontally as well. The others don't. The others all have just the one going up. That's to knock it off to the side. I should have tilted them out, but I, I actually was expecting them to be 45 degrees rotated. Instead of blowing at the landing gear, they, it should really be here. But anyway. Well, on this pass, we had the flaps out, so I'll just do the same. Okay, basically the same result as the first passes. This time I'm going to use a lot of ignitions. We got the 500 ignition engines for a reason. Now it's using a lot of RCS. Weird. Well, oh, arming the chutes. Out they go. Okay, and the mains are out. Alright, separating the... Oh, come on. Decelerate us. Alright, separating the heat shield. Because of the parachutes, the suicide burn countdown can't figure this out exactly. But I'll just be conservative about it. Okay, 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 okay. We're down, we're down. Okay, thrusters firing, not necessary. While we're here, we let me just see how the ladders look. We can't actually have a Kerbal get out, obviously. We don't have a Kerbal. Um, all right, well, I mean, that should be long enough. Okay, well, let me see if it can get back to orbit, right? Might as well. Save us some time later. Let's have SAS on and prepare that. Okay, and... Up we go. But I'm probably going to contemplate replacing this with the Vegas command module. So that's not Gemini. Basically, it's so that's not Gemini. I've done a landing on Mars with a Gemini pod before. I don't need to do it again. The orbital. Well, that's a lot of orbital speed, actually. Maybe I should have tried retrograde just to see what kind of margins we have in that direction. But let's just say I want to make orbit with 500 meters per second extra would be good. Eight and a half minutes left. We might be able to leave off the center engine up there. Yeah, I could have turned a little bit faster. Now, Kerbals are gonna make things a little bit heavier. Uh oh. 
Okay, staging. This stage really doesn't have much delta V. It's one reason why I'd like to, and that's all messy. But using the Vegas spot will leave us some more room to put the engines a little bit nicer. And leaving that off will give us some more delta V maybe. So we can just fill in that hole. Ah, we don't have as much overall velocity as I thought we would at this point. Let me uh, do the burn closer to Apoapsis. Things a little bit prematurely. We could probably have a Kerbal take off those parachutes. I don't know. I remember. I forget whether. No, we probably need a engineer for that. I forget exactly what the functionality is. Uh, whether we need an engineer to take those off, but that might save us some. Okay, well that's an orbit. I wanted 500. We got 400. So we might be able to optimize this a little bit better. Uh, I think it's a pretty good test though. So that's that's what I've got. Uh, it, it's possible that just putting the regular adjustable heat shield at the bottom and making sure it decouples properly would have worked out. And actually the decoupler I made for this, I'm just going to revert to vehicle assembly now. I mean if I really wanted to put the adjustable heat shield, this little decoupler is fine too. Perfectly compatible. <laughs> we could do this, but I feel like if I do this, it's got to become imbalanced. I like having the flaps there just to move the center of lift pressure, or whatever you want to call it, uh, a little bit higher up. I think that might be better. But anyway, so we'll go back to career mode, and you can tell me whether you think this is an okay thing for me to do, uh, or if you have a solution for why the flaps aren't being. Uh, read by far and are not getting the correct drag, that'd be nice. I would like them to get the correct drag. I'll look into it and maybe we'll see about the inflatable heat shield, uh, applying the inflatable heat shield solution to the part. I'll make sure that it has the right area and everything. But yeah, we'll go back to career mode and we'll have confidence that our lander at least seems to be in better shape. So with that, Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.